Hello everyone. As most of you probably know or have been able to figure out by now, one of the things that's very near and dear to my heart is when people make their own games that are based on the AGI, or Adventure Game Interpreter Engine, which powered most of Sierra's early adventures. Uh, the first three King's Quests, the first two Space Quests, the first Police Quest, the first Leader Suit Larry, were all based on this game engine, as well as, uh, I think, some other Sierra games. Gold Rush was based on it. Anyway, um, it was later um, succeeded by SCI, Sierra Creative Interpreter. But since then, a lot of people have made uh, little sort of indie homebrew games that were based on this engine, and I wanted to highlight one today. Uh, this is just a demo of a game that was never released. This demo is, I think, something like 10 years... Actually, I think it's even more than 10 years old, because I had it... Uh, I don't even remember when I got it. I got it a long time ago, and uh, I've had it sitting around. And I thought I'd show it off because even though it's just a, a demo, it's like a... I think there are only about a dozen rooms in it. Uh, it uh, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was well made. I thought it had a couple of interesting ideas. And I just thought it was good enough that it deserved a video of its own, even if it's uh, just a short demo and there's not really much to it. So let's go ahead and play. The game is called Jen's Quest. Um, the name was later changed to Chimera Angel. Um, and actually, as we'll see in a moment, there used to be a website for this game, which appears to have since disappeared. But anyway, welcome to the second demo release of Jen's Quest. This release contains numerous improvements over the original demo release, including much improved graphics and better word recognition. Most work by Joel McCormick. Press a key to skip the intro. Um, more of the game has also been impl implemented in this release, so you can have more of a taste of what the game I have in mind will be like. If you have any comments or suggestions, send them to joel at chimeraangel.com. That is the website that used to exist. If you go there right now, uh, as of the time that I'm making this video, that website went down. I remember for a long time there was a lot of... Um, on that website, if you went to that website, there was a lot of um, updating happening there in terms of a bigger and better demo that uh, Mr. McCormick was working on, and it just never saw the light of day. He just suddenly stopped updating after a while, and then the site went down. Uh, so if you email either of those addresses, your email is going to bounce uh, at this point in time. I remember I, I emailed him, I emailed Joel McCormick uh, a long time ago, I think, again, I think more than 10 years ago, and he said that he had abandoned work on the game, but then apparently sometime after that he picked up work on it again. But anyway, here are the credits. Uh, you will see that the credits consist entirely of Mr. McCormick crediting himself for everything. Oh, except for a couple of special thanks at the end. All right, here we go. So, uh, the game uh, begins with us playing this titular woman named Jen, which I believe is short for Jennifer. She's the woman in the blonde hair. And she says, Hey, Chris, you doing anything tonight? Kristen responds, No, I have too much work to do. How about you? Yeah, I'm probably going to go to Jeff's party. Oh, that's right. That's tonight. Crap, I wanted to go to that. So pull off the studying and go. Don't tempt me. I might, and I can't afford to. Knock, knock, knock. I got it. So Jen is a uh, a student, and she is being visited by her parents at her uh, at her student dorm at college or university. Mom, Dad, what are you doing here? Har, har, har! Is that any way to greet us after we've traveled so far? Yeah, yeah. It would have been nice if I'd known you were coming, though. No, Jennifer, if we had told you we were coming, it wouldn't have been a surprise, would it? I guess not. Where are you staying? I'll drive up there in a minute. We, ha we, we haven't made arrangements yet. We just wanted to stop by for a minute first. You mean you came all the way out here without deciding where you're going to stay? We're trying to be more spontaneous. I suppose this is something people do when they have a um, a midlife crisis. Uh, they try to pretend to be young and irresponsible because it's cool that way. I'm not. I'm not deriding old people by saying this. Uh, I'm probably pretty getting pretty old myself. I'm just saying that this is something that people of my age do when they feel like they're anyway. That wasn't very smart. The hotels around here stay booked a lot of the time, and Kristen's got a lot of work to do tonight, so we can't stay here. Do you think we could just use the phone? I guess you're going to have to. Ten minutes later, dot, dot, dot. 
oh, this is awkward. Now the parents are in the student dorm and Kristen's still up there reading her book or whatever she's doing. Okay, I've got his reservations at a hotel a few minutes down the road. We should go ahead and check in. We'll call you in a few minutes, sweetie. We'll go out to eat or something so we don't bother Kristen. I think you've already done that, but all right, I'll see you in a while. A few minutes later. Why didn't you tell me your parents were coming up? I didn't know it either. They came up here without even making reservations at a hotel. Yeah, I noticed. Your dad kept trying to make conversation the whole time your mom was on the phone. Yeah, sorry about that. They may be dorks and they may not be my real parents, but... What do you mean they're not your real parents? You know, I don't really know where I'm going with this. I'm probably not going to be able to go out tonight because of this. I love, uh, just as a tangent, I love making the, uh, the ringing sound effect that the mip mip aliens make in the telephone sketch of Sesame Street. Remember when they find, discover a telephone and they're all... Telephone. Yeah, I just thought I'd mention that because for some reason it was very important to me. I'll get it. I'm sure it's them. I think there's. I think later it'll be possible to increase the speed of this walking animation. Hello. Hey, honey, it's Dad. We're all checked in at the hotel. Now that's taken care of. You can come to dinner with us. I've got to take a shower before I go. Where are we going to eat? I'll meet you there. Some place called Putrid Pete's. Hmm, sounds appetizing, Dad. Sounds really good. <laughs> I'll be there in about a half hour, okay? Sure, we'll see you there. And thus begins the game. So it a it is a fairly simple premise for a game. Jen is in her dorm, and her parents spontaneously came up to visit. The game gets a little bit more uh, unusual or outlandish later on, but anyway. Let's go ahead and see where I go with this. Uh, the demo is short enough that I feel like I could probably do it in one video if I speed through it, but because I tend to talk a lot about everything, I don't know if I'll be that quick. But anyway, let's take a look around. This is our dorm room. Kristen, our roommate, is lying on her bed studying or pretending to do so. I like that little book flip animation that, uh, that she does. It's very, uh, very diligent. She reads. It looks like she reads a page about every five seconds because she keeps turning the page in after just a few seconds. Uh, let's see, can we talk to Kristen? Uh, I, I have a lot of studying to do. I bet you do. So, uh, if you look at the beds, um, the beds are raised above the floor with desks underneath. Kristen is currently on her bed studying. And if you look at the desks, the desks are underneath the beds. Your desk is underneath your bed to the right, and on your desk is the phone. Kristen's computer is on her desk. Let's take a look at this uh, computer while we're here. That's Kristen's laptop. I don't own a computer, so Kristen lets me use hers to check my email and stuff. She's got one of those stupid bouncing ball screensavers now. Oh, what, what's stupid about those? I like those bouncing ball screensavers. They're interesting to look at. She used to have one that cycled through a bunch of pictures of cute shirtless guys, but I guess it got old after she saw the, she saw the same 20 pictures a thousand times. Um, it does appear that Mr. McCormick has some uh, slightly reductive ideas about the habits of college-age young women. But we won't hold that against him. Let's see, can I check my e email? Oh, apparently apparently SCI is not acknowledging a hyphen as an inputable character. Well, a lot of people like to spell email without the hyphen anyway, but I still spell email with the hyphen because I'm old-fashioned like that. It doesn't understand. Check. Uh, can I use the computer? I'm not worried about my email. It even spells it with a hyphen here, but apparently you can't type hyphen into AGI. I didn't even realize that. I'm not worried about my email right now. I'm sure I have loads of junk mail and a few emails from friends. I can get back to them later. Okay. Can we open some of these drawers? Open drawer. Nothing in any of the drawers that we need. Can we look out the window? There's a girl out there sunbathing in the warm weather of early September. Okay. I don't think a location is ever given for this game. It's not clear whether this... I assume this game is meant to take place in some sort of American... Small town, just some generic American city or town without any particular local character. Uh, anyway, can we uh, use the phone? I have no reason to use the phone now. That's true. Open the door. There's no need to mess in the closet. There's nothing there we need. Okay, let's go outside, and uh, I don't think there's anything we can do here. Notice, by the way, the game has a maximum score of three points. Yes, not a very long game. 
Let's uh, let's look at these signs that are on the wall. There are two notes posted by the walls by the exit. Okay, uh, that's great. Can we read them? The yellow note on the left wall says, Notice the following are the dates for the mandatory... Actually, you know what? I think most of this is pretty... Um, the meaning of honor discusses the importance of the university's honor code. Actually, because uh, this is completely irrelevant to the game in every possible way, this has no bearing on the game whatsoever. I'm not going to read these out loud. I do like that it says this is information only. The, the university does not encourage students to engage in sexual activity. Alcohol Awareness Program informs you of some surprising facts about the dangers of using alcohol. Jennifer is thankful she's not a freshman anymore. And this note over here is also uh, just some random note about a cookout. I'm not going to read that out loud because uh, I don't want to get too caught up on little details like that. What am I not close enough? I'm right in front of the door. Wow. Seriously? It told me I was not close enough, and then it, it opened the door and went in. Wow. Okay. So here we are in the uh, in the bathroom. Uh, let's go ahead and take off our clothes. Hmm, quit worrying about the trivialities. I'll take care of them for you. Okay, game. You're not going to play it that way. Which shower salt should we go in? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I don't know. I like the number three because it's divisible by three. So let's go into the third stall. Except in one of the showers. Oh, and we just got a point for going into the shower. You're probably wondering why you're taking a shower with your clothes on. You're not. Do you mean I'm not wondering why I'm taking the shower, or am I not taking the shower with my clothes on? You are a shapeshifter. Your clothes are an illusion, at least when the weather is warm and you don't need them. In winter, you will employ the use of actual clothes, since you need them to stay warm. Okay. Now what should I wear? No, I don't like it. What's wrong with it? It's a perfectly good dress. What is this? A school uniform? No thanks. I'm sure mom and dad would just love it if I showed up dressed for, showed up for dinner dressed like this. <coughs> I, I, I'd love to see the looks on their faces, but no. There we go. Much better. This has its, its advantages since you could stop buying clothes if you wanted to. For now, you do buy them because it would be a little obvious that someone was going that something was going on if you never bought any new clothes but continued to have new outfits. You don't want anyone to know about your abilities because you doubt anyone could you doubt anyone would trust someone who could assume the identity of others. That's a good point. If you if you actually had the ability to shape shift and people knew about it, then people wouldn't trust you even if you were a trustworthy person. So that's I guess that's a valid point. Besides, if word ever got out about it, scientists would undoubtedly want to study you, and that would just plain suck. So there's really not a lot of backstory given behind how did Jen become a shapeshifter and what does she mean those aren't her real parents? Was she created in a laboratory like J.C. Denton and given fake parents also like J.C. Denton? Or I don't know. Uh, I think that that was sort of not really intended to be very well fleshed out in this game's story, actually. So let's go outside. And here we are. This is a very generic street in a very generic part of town in front of a very generic building with a very generic tree. I'm right outside my door. My car is sitting out here. Let's climb the tree because that's what you do in every adventure game. I don't climb stuff unless I have to, and I don't have to. Technically, we don't have to do anything. All we really got to do is live and die, but I'm in a hurry and don't know why. All right, so let's get in our car and drive. I'm supposed to be meeting my parents, remember? I don't have time for general driving. I didn't say drive generally. I just said, do I have to specify like a destination? Drive to the diner? Okay. Okay. You meet your parents for dinner at Putrid Pete's Restaurant. Oh, I guess it was a restaurant, not a diner. Oh, well, whatever. And tell them all about the many things you've been doing since the last time they saw you when you returned to school at the beginning of the semester. You leave out a few details they don't need to know about, of course. After dinner, which was surprisingly pretty good, you go to their hotel room for a while and visit them. You don't stay long, however, because you did have other plans before they showed up. It is night when you return to your dorm. What were those other plans? I wonder the game doesn't really say. All right, so let's get out of the car. I like the way that the game makes you actually open the door, get in and out of the car, and then close the door. I think Police Quest 1 did the same thing. And I'm not being sarcastic when I say I like it. It actually, it's like a, it's an interesting, it's nice that you have to do that because that's how real life works. I mean, you don't just press a button and boom, you're in a car. You have to open the door, get in or out, and then close the door. So so what's different here? Uh, Kristen is not here. 
it's nighttime now, so it's no longer a girl outside or a woman outside sunbathing. And if you look at the window, that window is an amazing piece of technology. It allows me to see what's going on outside my dorm while I'm still inside. That's true. It's very, uh, very high tech there. And there appears to be a uh, piece of paper or something on uh, on our bed since that was uh, affixed since we uh, since we were last here. There's a note pinned to my bed. Okay, can we read the note? You don't have it, that's true. You don't have to actually be in possession of the note to read it. You can read it. It's right in front of Jen's face. I think she can read it where it is, but... Okay, let's get the note. What's this? Claudia! Mm, The note is written by a man, so I'm going to go ahead and read it in, in a masculine voice. Claudia, you should have known you couldn't hide from me forever, even coming to this filthy place. Well, I have your roommate now, and if you ever want to see her alive again, you'll pay me the 10,000 crunchies you me. I think there's supposed to be the word O in as the uh, penultimate word there, which has been uh, regrettably omitted by Mr. McCormick's, uh, probably a typo. Uh, so you'll pay me the 10,000 crunchies you owe me. You have one week to pay me or she dies. Come to my warehouse number 107 in the block of warehouses on 4th and... Martius, Martius, and the door will be open for you. You know where to go from there. Come alone, or I'll kill all of you, including you and your roommate. As it is, I'm willing to accept the money you owe me, since you were always my best girl. Remember, you have one week, Tony. Either this is someone's sick idea of a joke, or this guy has the wrong person, and Kristen's in trouble. And what the hell is a crunchy? Um, if you're like me, uh, you... It would be logical to assume that crunchy is probably a slang term for a dollar, like a buck, but uh, that is in fact not the case. We'll find that out later. So, since uh, since we... Actually, hold on. I was going to say, since we got this uh, note, let's go ahead and do the logical thing and drive directly to that warehouse and expose ourselves to danger. But actually, let's go ahead and take a moment. I'll save my game here. Um, and I'll do the actual logical thing, like the actual thing that a person would probably do in real life, and dial the phone. Dial who? Well, um, those of you... Actually, even those of you who are not North Americans probably know that 911 is the um, emergency number in uh, North America because I think there used to be, wasn't there that TV show called Rescue 911? In most other countries, it's a different number. In some countries, it's 000. Um, I think here it's 112, but anyway, whatever. 911, do you have an emergency? Uh, I guess I have to type yes. You tell the operator about the note. He sends an officer to see you, and the police department sends several squad cars to investigate. Uh, I don't think we need several squad cars. It's just a note. It's not like... It's not really a 911 emergency. Actually, technically, we should have dialed the police department and not 911, but... Oh, well. Early the next morning, you were informed that all of the officers who went to investigate the warehouse were killed. Okay. You never hear from Kristen again. Uh, I don't think it works that way, to be perfectly honest. I don't think that if... uh, if a bunch of police officers investigate something and they all end up dead, then the police department just says, "Oh, oh, oh hmm. they all died. I guess we'll just forget about that. Then we're not gonna, we're not gonna investigate further. Why did, uh, why did a bunch of police officers die? Well, that's just, gosh darn it, that's just bad luck. We'll just uh, let that one slide for now. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so we never hear from Kristen again. About a week after her disappearance, someone shoots you in the back, and you die unaware of the identity of your killer. Real smooth. You got me killed. Thanks a lot. I think this death music goes on for a while as well. Okay, I'm not going to let the death music play out because uh, it seems sort of like a riff on the death music from um, um, King's Quest 3, the original King's Quest 3, except it's not exactly that music. It's sort of a sort of a reworked version of that. Uh, so let's drive. I guess if I say drive, she complains that uh, that's too general. We have to say drive to warehouse, which is the warehouse in, uh, at the address in the note that was uh, that was given to us. After a while of driving through the maze of warehouses, you finally find warehouse number 107. Okay. Um, 
Oh, I guess I can't get out of the car. Open the stupid door first, yes. Open door. Close door, even though we don't really have to close the door, but... So, uh, we're here in the warehouse district of the city. There is a sign that says, Keep Out. And um, among various types of graffiti, there's what appears to be a cave cave person's stick drawing at the top of two cave people hunting a wild animal, which is a... Uh, I actually find that rather amusing. I don't know if that's what's that... I don't know if that's what that is supposed to be, but I, did, I do find it rather amusing, the idea of incorporating graffiti that emulates, uh, you know, the drawings found in caves from prehistoric civilizations. I do find that kind of funny. Uh, can we read the graffiti? Cops suck. Okay. Okay. Okay, indeed. Let's do the very logical thing and walk directly into a warehouse alone at night without any, uh, without any protection and with the clear implication that uh, some kidnapper has uh, has set up residence in his warehouse. I'm sure that nothing bad can happen from doing this. You test the door cautiously and find that it is unlocked. Oh, there's a freaking dead guy in here. You attempt to leave, but you find that the door is locked. It doesn't look like he's been dead for you long either. This is just great. The machine against the far wall suddenly comes alive, and terror strikes you when you see that it's just pointed a big gun at you. It begins to speak. If the person on the screen isn't you, you're going to die. Please stand by while visual scanner is initialized. This is a good place to save the game. Um, initializing. I'm too old to spell correctly anymore, unfortunately. Did I spell that right? Initializing as I did. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and look at the, uh, can I just say, look, man? He's dead. I'm going to have just like him if I stand here looking at him. That's true. Uh, scanner initialized. Please remain still while your identity is confirmed. Excessive motion may cause the scanner to incorrectly reject your identity and kill you. Oh, it killed me anyway. Oh, too bad. You died. If only it were possible to make yourself look like something that you're not. Like somebody that you're not. Oh, wait a minute. All right. Well, since we can do that, let's go ahead and... So I had some trouble here because if you just type shapeshift, um, the game th considers that a random suggestion. What you actually have to do is... T oh, oh, I died again. Hold on. Let me just restore the game. What you actually have to s say is shapeshift into something. So I'm going to say shapeshift into girl, meaning the girl or woman or whatever on the screen. Oh, Claudia, it's you. You've been expected. You watch with amazement as a portal opens to your left. What the heck? Please step through the portal quickly. This building will be detonated in exactly one minute. Um. After finding the door is still locked, you decide you don't have much choice. Let me see. Portal to who knows where or certain death. I'm thinking the portal. You take a deep breath and step inside. You step out of the portal. It didn't feel like anything surprisingly, kind of like walking through a door. The sunlight is blinding after being in a dark warehouse at night. When your eyes finally adjust, you try to make sense of what you've been through. You have absolutely no idea where you are or what's going on. All you know is that your best friend is in very serious trouble and somehow you've got to save her and lose this badly dressed form. Okay. Um... I think I'll go ahead and stop here and probably make this uh, continue in another video, um, actually. For some reason, the score, um, the maximum score gets scrambled. You might remember, uh, I think I pointed it out, the maximum score in the game is 3. If you save and then later restore the game for some reason, it shows the maximum score is 255, but it's still actually 3. It's just a glitch in the game logic or whatever. So let's go ahead and actually, since we're here, let's get the third and final point of the game. Uh, our standing grassy area where the portal dropped you off at some distance to the north and to the east there are signs of human settlement. Um, what's this on the ground? Grass. Great. If I walk... there, There's obviously a yellow thing on the ground there, but... There we go. You see a necklace lying on the ground under the, bu under the bushes. You have to get closer. The necklace. Bend over and pick up the necklace that's lying under the bushes. And let's look at the necklace. 
This is a necklace which you found underneath some bushes. It looks valuable, and there is an inscription on the back which is mostly worn. You can make out the word from, and what looks like an L. Okay. I'll go ahead and save here. And I'll say, uh, got necklace. So that's it in terms of points. We've already gotten three points of the demo. Um, and the rest of the demo is not that much longer, but since I've already been talking for about 25 minutes, I'll go and stop here and, uh, and finish out this game in a, uh, a second video. So, uh, I hope you've, I hope you've enjoyed. I realize the game is a bit silly. Um, it's plot is not very well realized, but, uh, but for some reason I like it. There's just something charming about, uh, about this, uh, about this game and the wits laid out. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and finish off later. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye for now.